Did you know that your menstrual cycle is a gateway into understanding everything about yourself? Now, if you're anything like me, then that statement might have stopped you in your tracks. I had no idea that there was so much more to my menstrual cycle than my period. And here to talk more about hormone balancing, energy, nervous system regulation, self-care and boundaries is certified cycle coach and yoga teacher, Samantha Garston. Her mission is to help women entrepreneurs master their energy, motivation and mindset. So if you want to learn more about how to nourish your inner ecosystem and maintain inner calm, even when life is throwing those punches, then keep watching my love. Samantha, welcome. Hello, it's very nice to be here. Wow, <laughs> that is a really nice intro. <laughs> I'm like, yes, I love all of that. I hear it. I really want to dive into a powerful distinction that you make between weakness and wisdom when it comes to the menstrual cycle. So I'm just going to share some of your words to give our lovely audience some context. Okay. Being in a body that bleeds means that your energy fluctuates. The society we live in asks us to consistently push past the signals our body gives us. The secret is this is not a weakness. It's a powerful wisdom that can optimize your life. Honestly, Samantha, when I saw that, that was posted on Twitter a little while ago, but when I saw that, I just thought this is such beautiful content. So I'd love to dive in. What is this difference between wisdom and weakness when it comes to the menstrual cycle? Wow, I love that you've picked that out particularly. That is one of my, I have my own favourite sayings, but that is something that I talk about a lot. And I think there is a huge stigma um, that goes along with being in a body that bleeds. There's still in this day and age, uh, shame and taboo when it comes to our menstrual cycle and navigating that and not just when we're in our bleeding years but all the way through through peri and post menopause you know the silence that we're kind of ushered to keep about the fact that we bleed or have periods um, then goes rolls on into kind of the perimenopause uh, age and transition where you know a lot of women suffer in silence with their symptoms and that goes through into menopause you know where always sort of hushed about what's happening in our bodies and yes that is slowly decreasing and there's been a lot of um things in the media with uh sort of post divinas like conversations about menopause which is amazing and i am pro everything um that she talks about however i feel like we shouldn't be waiting to firefight the symptoms you know when we're there we should be taking like preventative actions to like help us transition and i'm getting to the point in a roundabout way but research shows that uh the more um the better our cycle health and the more balance that we have in our bleeding years the easier the transition will be through perimenopause so it's really about reclaiming that inner wisdom that power now and finding a level of acceptance and surrender to it and understanding that we're not less than so like women have been bleeding since the dawn of time since you know women <laughs> were on the planet and there there has been like generations much gone past you know women were revered uh during the time of their period as being like an oracle we have this natural connection to source uh to our insight uh when we bleed and the work there was a time when you know we would have been revered as you know high members of society during um or sort of more like in tribal cultures um during that time and slowly with the modern world and you know a lot more understanding about like why things happen in the body that has been ushered away but that doesn't take away from the fact that the energetics are still the same we are we do have this like clarity and insight and 
not just through your period, but each phase of the cycle, and there are four, people are often um, surprised to know that that, most people just know that well, there's one week they bleed and there's one week they feel good and the rest is kind of like a little bit of a gray area in between. Um, but yes, each phase has its strengths and vulnerabilities. And the more we learn about it, the more we can play into those strengths and work in flow, the more that we can kind of optimize ourselves. So when we learn that our hormonal fluctuations don't make us less than, when we stop trying to maintain the linear expectation of us in our society, because um, and this isn't like a whole patriarchy bashing thing, it's just, a, it's a fact. The world we live in has been built, the majority of it has been built on a very uh, masculine energy um, structure, you know, that, you know, that kind of like nine to five, that linear way of life, that does not gel with our cyclical nature. I often say we're like a, a, a round peg that fits in a square hole. Yes, we fit, but really not to our fullest capacity. And we're not really given the chance to kind of excel on our own terms to find out what those other phases kind of hold in store for us because we're always too busy trying to match the expectation on us, which means that for a good chunk of our cycle, we're often feeling less than. So until we learn to be in acceptance of those hormonal fluctuations, we're always going to feel like we're not quite hitting the mark and we're always going to feel like the phases that perhaps are more reflective or invite us to slow down, take time for um, more introspective work, creativity, that's always going to feel like less than, we're always going to feel like we're not matching up. So that's the kind of like apparently you know the difference between the two and what we're continually fighting plus like what we could be embracing. I would love to dive in to something that you mentioned because as I was listening to you talk about how women were revered when they were bleeding and this deeper connection to source and insight that really resonates with me now but I was thinking of my 20 year old self who who was sort of raising her hand saying but wait there were periods in my cycle where I hated the world or I thought my life was a complete failure and I always wanted to dump my boyfriend so I'd love to hear your thoughts on how we can sort of make that discernment between getting clarity of like what's really true the wisdom that's coming through in our cycle that's like genuine wisdom versus the thoughts that get triggered by uncomfortable feelings that we might be experiencing as a result of our cycle so to look at that we might need to like backtrack and just i'll give a little like rundown of the cycle um, in the way that i teach it um the best way to kind of understand our cycle is to put in really tangible terms to understand the energetics. Now, this isn't just like woo woo stuff. I love my woo, but I'm like firmly from the woo and do camp. I like, I love the woo woo, but I love the tangible steps. So I like to make sense of like both things. So when we look at a way to energetically understand the biology, things start to land in. And when I talk about the framework of the cycle, I use the seasons. When we look at our week of our period, it's referred to as the uh, inner winter of our cycle. So you can think about that as a time to rest and restore, recover. As we move round into the next phase, that has, uh, it's a phase all of its own. It's the pre-ovulatory phase. And then we refer that to as an inner spring. So you can think energies emerging here. Um, it's budding, you know, just like things do in the spring of our season. So it kind of makes sense. You know, our hormones are on the up and up. When we get to the peak of our energy, well, the potential for peak in energy, because the more balanced and harmonious your cycle is, the more you're going to feel that peak, because it might not always feel like that if your cycle is very imbalanced. So that peak that is the week of ovulation. And then we go back down on the uh, on the other side, so our energy starts to wane, 
and that is the premenstrual phase and is known as inner autumn and then we go all the way back down to winter and then we start all over again so immediately once we start to put in this really tangible way of understanding like yeah okay i understand winter i want to sit and watch the sofa no, sorry sit on the sofa and watch netflix <laughs> or movies or have comfy cozy time that's what we want to be doing spring we're like right okay summer's nearly here let's get prepared you start rising in your energy summer you're out with friends or having barbecues and nice times and you're out and days are longer and then autumn we start wrapping up and becoming a little bit more introspective perhaps we take a maybe a few more evenings in less evenings out and then we start again so it has like our menstrual cycle m mirrors the blueprint of nature so we have this beautiful synergy um with with what's happening in the natural world and i mean this is i have a lot more to say but i mean that is not just isolated to the um those who bleed you can still continue to work cyclically you can use the moon in place of your menstrual cycle that's another big conversation in itself but just to know that if you're like oh i'm sort of post menopause or heading that way that doesn't mean you can't work with your cyclical energy anymore so when we start looking like in that now we have an idea of the cycle you can start to understand that perhaps if you got to your inner winter and you didn't take time to rest you're going to go into your emerging energy already a little bit low then you get round to the summer and where you should have a peak of energy you just feel kind of like a little bit strung out then you move into the premenstrual phase. Is it a wonder, like, we don't love people <laughs> that our boyfriend is really irritating? <laughs> because we're just done, you know? We, if you, um, I like to always explain it in terms of, like, air travel. You're at the runway, you're on the plane, you're going on holiday. You take time to take off. And it's a good while before the seatbelt sign comes off and you get to altitude so it takes time to get, get to that peak and on the way back down the plane doesn't go just from like well we're going to land now and just <laughs> hit the ground i mean it would be literally terrifying your nervous system would be shot <laughs> it takes a long time from that seatbelt sign coming back on you know you're there a good 40 minutes from like you're like come on it's time to get there now um but it takes time to to rise and then fall again and so in our cycle, what tends to happen without that menstrual cycle awareness, we go from our period and we try to go up to altitude cruising level without taking the time to get there. And on the way back down, we try to like string out that energy of that peak week energy until right until we bleed. And it's no wonder that like when we're trying to keep pushing and pushing, pushing, then it suddenly feels like you hit a brick wall your energy drops off a cliff you feel wonder why you can't get off the sofa anymore why your, your muscles are just aching when you go back to do your hit classes and then suddenly you have a period and you're like oh that's why but when we take time to get there and time to get back that leans into our cyclical energy that's like how our energy works in flow so often the reason that we feel like it's you know our premenstrual phase that pms quite a lot large part of it is um contributed to by the fact that we're not working in harmony with our energy by the fact that we're pushing too hard and interestingly the inner critic its home is the premenstrual phase and the more vulnerable we leave ourselves here with being tired and run down and not listening to our bodies the more that inner critic chips away and the more susceptible we are to kind of those thoughts of like get out of my face now <laughs> what's coming to me is what you were talking about in response to my first question where you talked about societal pressures because rather than listening to the seasons we're listening to what is out there and we're tuning into what others are telling us we should do or an unrealistic benchmark rather than tuning into I'm in inner winter now or I'm in inner summer. You have a phrase which is 
developing body literacy and you're saying you know when you when you deepen your knowledge of the menstrual cycle as you've really begun to help us do with this explanation um, and what's going on in your body we we begin to develop this body literacy and it seems like a wonderful antidote to the comparisons and the fatigue that we can feel if we're just comparing ourselves to what people are telling us we should be able to achieve but i'd love to hear you talk a little bit more about how someone can develop this body literacy let's put it like this your body's love language is the symptoms and signals that it gives you so your body is talking to you all the time but for the most part we kind of ignore it and uh logic and the brain comes over and like no we've got to do that thing we've got to finish that to-do list we have to do this we put these expectations on ourselves or we feel pressure and expectation from the outside world but when we start to tune in and listen to the symptoms and signals our body gives us when we tune into what we need we start to build a bigger picture of you know what is going to serve us best so developing your body literacy means understanding what's your truth what's true to you and so much of the time we rely on like dr google or insta inspo or random facebook groups where anything could be true <laughs> um when we're like looking for the um resolve to um issues that we might have so one of the like very very simple ways that we have to start developing our own body literacy because we're all unique there is a broad spectrum of what is normal um is to cycle track and it's a really easy practice it can take three minutes a day and you know it's just one of those things that will grow richer over time and when I say it's game changing. No one really believes me until they're like a month in or two months in and they're like, oh my God, it's game changing. I'm like, I know I did tell you. <laughs> so um, I have a, a cycle tracker and I'm sure we can put like a, a link somewhere. You can do this on apps and things. And I would say the best cycle tracking is the one that you'll stick to. So if you're like, I love my apps and my phone and my digital solutions, that's fine. But there's just something very revealing about this paper tracker. Um, at least I found so in my journey. It's just taking three minutes a day at the end of the day. And I really like to do this um, just before I go to bed and I have a bunch printed off and I have them on a clipboard by my bed with a pen. So it takes out any excuses <laughs> so that you're consistently like creating this micro habit day by day and you just think how did i feel in my physical self how did i feel in my mental my clarity and focus how did i feel in my emotional self my emotional body what's going on for me today the most overriding thing and how do i feel in my heart or um my soul i like to think of it as this like connection to great nature and just by doing that, that check-in every single day, you start to build up a picture of how you feel and you start to spot the pattern. So the first one might be revealing, but the second one you can say, oh, I felt like that last month. And the third one, oh, oh no, I feel like this every month actually. And then for me, for example, cycle day six, I always feel like a little bit of a wobble. It uh, signifies the shift in uh, to me and my shift in estrogen as it starts to rise. And, you know, sometimes I feel a little bit tearful and a bit more, I don't know, just sensitive. And that's just how normally it's about day six or seven for me. But previous to having that knowledge, it would have been like, oh, my God, what's wrong with me? My period's finished. Why am I feeling so tearful now? There must be something wrong with me. Because that's the question that we always come back to. That's the one that everyone always says to me, what's wrong with me? And it's nothing. There's nothing wrong with you. Um, there's nothing wrong with us. We don't need fixing. We just need to understand ourselves. So by checking in and tracking, you develop your own picture so that you know what's normal for you and develop your body literacy in that way so that you know what you need and when, and then you can start to anticipate it. For example, um, about day 20, day 21 in my cycle, I notice a significant like huh, drop in my energy. And I know, okay, it's time to kind of start winding things down and, you know, wrapping up um, stuff that I've been working on. 
But previously, without that, I'll be like, what's wrong with me? Why can't I just power through like I have been doing? And so that is the body literacy. And that is liberating to understand what's going on in your body, what's normal for you, to, and to know that you have the answers because no one else can really give that to you. And because we're all so very beautifully unique. When you talked about the symptoms and the, the signs in your body being your body's love language, I was like, what a gorgeous way to reframe it. Because often I might feel a cramp in my stomach and my first thought is like, I don't need this. Like, what, 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 a, what a bummer that I've got this. But when I reframe it and imagine that that's a little love letter that my body just sent me, it's like, oh my God, I would certainly respond to that in a different way. And I love this explanation that now on day six or seven, you now understand that tearfulness is coming from the, the shifting in your hormones rather than looking out to like, you know, why am I feeling like this? It made me think of like our bodies are trying to send us a little love note. And in response to that love note, we're sort of looking in completely the opposite direction to try to figure out, you know, what's just arrived. And our bodies, they're going, why, why are you looking out there? Like the, the message came from inside. Why are you not coming in to give me attention? So I love the way that you've described that. I, I'm really curious about sort of diving into like some specifics because you've talked about if we, if we don't manage our energy, what's going to happen is we're going to come to this inner summer, but we're not going to really experience that lifting of energy because we're so completely drained by then. Or it means that we're going to come to that inner autumn and we're just going to be at the end of our tether that we're going to be irritated and we're going to all want to dump our boyfriends. So <laughs> what sort of, what sort of little lovely tidbits or specific advice do you give to your clients who want to manage their energy? We are all uniquely different. And our experience of our cycle is dependent on, you know, a few things like a, you know, the, the way we experience our hormones in our body, but there's also different personality traits that allow us to experience the cycle differently. If, if we look at the cycle being two halves, if we look at in a winter as one pole and in a summer week of ovulation as the other pole, when we think about the first half, it's a very doing energy. It's a rising doing. It's not a, like a out of the moon cave, I call it, the week of my period, out of the moon cave and back into the fire. No, it's a, a rising energy that rises to a peak. And as I said, then from ovulation back down, it's a waning energy and I call it a being energy. So we've got doing in the first half and being in the second half. Now, certain things will ex will change like how you experience that. So not everything it can be like a blanket explanation but i will speak to a few things for example i have a client she's a leo she is completely happy being you know extroverted and center of attention she loves the doing half and finds the being half quite challenging because it invites her to be in stillness with herself and her thoughts now myself, I, um, well, I'm, I probably, I would go like more with the ambivert, but I'm happy in the doing, but I need to take time to decompress in between, but I'm at home in my being. I'm very ponderous and people think I'm insane when I say the premenstrual phase is definitely the fav my most favorite phase of the cycle. <laughs> and I never would have thought that previously. But because I've learned to kind of be in a level of acceptance with it and see all the beauty within it, I love it. I love this time of reflection. So there's certain things that will ex will change, like how you experience. But there are a few things that we can all do uh, and be mindful of and take into consideration, like our own unique personality traits and how we feel. Inner winter is definitely the one of rest. It's not the it's not the week to go above and beyond. It really isn't. So ditch out your cardio and your hit classes and your running. Swap it out. Yin yoga, restorative, gentle yoga, anything along those lines. Gentle walks, green exercise, being in nature. That's what you kind of want to be looking at in terms of like movement. It you know during the week of my period. Uh, as a business owner, I take a total social media blackout. I don't post anything and I don't appear online for three days. 
and I also have an out of office. So there's little ways you can claw back time. And yes, there's lots of people that, you know, are not in that position, but you know, workplace, uh, there are lots of workplace period policies coming in just as there are me menopause policies. I mean, if you feel confident enough to go to your employer, if you feel like it's the right conditions to be able to ask about like having a quieter space for you to work in perhaps, or, um, to have like non-client facing days, at least for the first three days of your period. Or if you have more flexibility in your calendar, don't schedule yourself in like really big meetings for the week of your period. Just give yourself space to breathe. Could look like um, batch cooking meals in advance so that you don't have to cook during the week of your period. Um, it could look like just not doing housework that week. If anyone wants anything washed, they can go and do it themselves. It might be communication with your partner, asking them perhaps to, you know, without being asked, take out the recycling, do the washing up, run you a bath, give you a, you know, shoulder rub, whatever it is. Communication can really help with the people, you know, that we live with and the people that are around us. That this is the week that I'm bleeding and actually I need some more support here and knowing that it's okay. But mostly it's just about doing something like less intense than you were before. And, you know, if you're in a position where you have a job, even if you're, especially if you're a business owner, because we tend to like work all the hours of the day, it's about maybe having a 15 minute lie in, not getting to work early, taking your full lunch break, which we're all entitled to do, no matter how much pressure is on you to work through that lunch break not staying on late, at least for the first three days, not succumbing to the pressure to stay on late, going to bed 15 minutes earlier. It's about finding pockets of time that you can reclaim for you because thinking about rest in terms of like sitting down for three hours can feel overwhelming. Like how on earth am I gonna fit that all in? And then that just adds into stress. And stress is one of the biggest players in, uh, in um, menstrual cycle disruption. Um, and so we want to kind of like eliminate stress for ourselves and make things manageable, making manageable, meaningful actions in our lives. And if it's just a pocket of time, if it is just you locked yourself in the bathroom and just took 10 deep breaths because that's all you could do that day, <laughs> then do that. So pockets of less, that's inner winter. In the week of um, your inner summer, energy is rising. So one of the key things here is um, to not go too big too soon. So I like to literally, I schedule out in my calendar, like it just says block. And it means that I don't bookend things back to back and I give myself a breathing space. And I know even from when I had a nine to five, I had flexibility in my calendar to be able to do that in between meetings and wouldn't like bookend things together just to give myself a bit of space. So we're constantly managing. We're not going out of the moon cave into the fire. We're going slowly giving ourselves space to rise. It's also really nice for um, this to be a time of like planning and thinking about the cycle ahead and how you want to manage your energy so that you, yeah, it's like putting in foundations. Now, hopefully with a bit of rest and not going too big too soon, we arrive at summer and potentially we have a peak of energy. Sometimes that doesn't always feel that way because of our individual personalities. Some people find that kind of like push are quite sensitive to that. So that rise comes from the rise of estrogen. We have two dominant hormones, estrogen and progesterone. The rise that I'm talking about in the first half is your rising estrogen is at peaks just before your ovulation. Some people are quite sensitive to that and it feels like an overwhelming experience rather than like a, ah, oh, you know, this is like I'm riding the high here. So that's something to take into consideration, but it also could mean that your um, cycle is perhaps a little imbalance and that's why you're feeling it like an overwhelming time and only sort of um self-investigation or support and like help working with that you know will kind of determine and your cycle tracking practice of course um now as women i think we're predisposed to kind of when we have energy we give it all away and it's very um much that mothering energy whether you're a mother or not we we kind of like have that. I'm not a mother, but I still find myself when I have a lot of energy to want to go above and beyond for like the people in my life. 
And yes, we might have a rise in energy here, but the, the number one rule is just because we have all the energy doesn't mean we have to give it all away. And so even if now, I mean, now is the time to go big. If you're going to do things like big projects, big, big tasks, dinner parties, whatever it is. And even if you do find yourself bookend back to back, because maybe here you have a little bit more tolerance for it. It's just remembering you don't have to give it all away. And that's where your boundaries start to come in. Like, yeah, OK, it's been a really, really full day. I think I've maxed out. I'm just not I'm just going to have an evening in. So it's about managing your energy. And it's relative to each phase, you know, rest during your period might look like I call it furry burrito week where you just wrap yourself up in a blanket and lie on the sofa and you look like a burrito, a blanket burrito that might look like rest in your inner winter. Rest in your summer just might look like going for a walk and clearing your head. So it's relative to the energy that you have. And then going into your autumn. Um, it's really about uh setting boundaries here we're naturally a little sharper we're it's quite a good phase to take on difficult conversations we have less tolerance for the things around us and that is a good thing i mean when we start to see that as not us not being like snappy and sharp and irritable and instead seeing that sharpness as an ally that can help you speak your truth imagine you know, in autumn, you're in the car, you've gone out for a nice walk and the sun is really lovely and you can feel it beating through the glass. And then you step outside and there's that very definite sharp crisp in the air and you're like, oh, no, it's autumn. <laughs> so that's kind of like us. You know, we have this maybe perhaps sunny disposition on the outside, but there is definitely that sharp crispness when we're like, actually, no. And no, I don't want to do that. No, I want to take a little bit of time for me. And so. Um, boundaries can be really helpful to manage our energy in our in autumn not only because like we have less energy so after the peak of estrogen we go on the wind down back down to menstruation progesterone is the dominant hormone there and has a different vibe it's that being energy we want to be more with ourselves we want to be more reflective or take time to be creative whatever that might look like to you and um it's about, you know, allowing ourselves to ha to have that and, you know, to know to be a full sentence. Um, I also find like um, spending less time on social media to, you know, because the inner critic is prone here, as I said, like not putting ourselves in a situation where we feel like we might compare ourselves or think about what other people are doing. You know, don't put ourselves in that um, situation often think you know like in autumn you know we're starting to put away the garden furniture so that it doesn't get perished in the winter we're wrapping up things you know we're really getting pre things prepared for the longer dark nights and that's really what autumn is about in our cycle um, and it can be a really beautiful time of yeah creativity um i like to write a lot here my journaling practice comes back a lot stronger here um yeah I really like this phase. I could speak forever about it. But yes, so those are some ways that you can start thinking about the cycle as a whole. And if you find that kind of invitation for stillness, like a little bit more difficult, then journaling is a really nice practice to kind of have a little bit of self inquiry. Like, why? What is it that you're finding difficult to sit with? What can that sharpness, I call it, your truth seer. It's like having your own personal truth seer along with you. What does that tell you? What does that little voice that is so very stomped out through the rest of the month, what is that little voice in your head trying to tell you? Because if you're finding it difficult to sit with yourself, there may be some conflict there with like what you really want and what is being expected of you. And I find that looking towards that question is kind of helps resolve that not wanting to sit in stillness with yourself. I've really, really enjoyed listening to 
to everything that you've said and it's so clear like you said I could talk for hours I, I can really feel that I can feel your passion for it and I'm kind of conscious is there anything that I didn't ask you that you're like oh my god and I didn't even get to mention this or have you got a particular offering that you want to talk about this is your sort of chance to really drop into this moment anything that wishes to be spoken in this time we've spoken a lot about the energetics but just to come back this the energetics are based on what is biologically happening in your body and um all of these practices building in these you know the rest and the don't go too big and the don't give it all away and the taking time for you by default those self-care practices have the knock-on fact um impact of creating harmony in our inner ecosystem and when i'm talking about your inner ecosystem i'm talking about hormonal balance how we manage like uh, how we regulate our nervous system because we're not leaning into a place of chronic stress all the time which most people live in and don't really realize when you're like sat down and you're like oh no i can't sit down i'm fidgy feet and you get up again you know this is this sort of perpetual state of stress that we live in that we can't sit down and relax anymore or that we do <laughs> um I call it um, the guilty relax. You know, if you've ever like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna relax, and you sit down, and you, you spend the whole time just thinking about all things you should do, and actually, it wasn't very restful at all. <laughs> it just felt guilty. It's the guilty relax. Um, it's learning like how, like when to pause and when to push, and understanding. You know, we're, we're not. It's not all about the hyper feminine because that's also a very unproductive place, <laughs> and it's not all about the masculine because then we squash out any femininity. It's creating this beautiful like shift between the two energies that we have. It's not one or the other. It's being and doing together, and like kind of marrying these two ideas and finding um freedom within both of those because femininity is kind of sometimes seen as weakness but there's so much strength to it when we learn to like embrace the strengths within it and in that inner autumn phase particularly there is so much strength there and like learning like you said potentially if you've been missing so much in that phase just because we're naturally pushed away from it and when we learn to reclaim that it's a very powerful place so yes just a reminder that these concepts they're a way to tap in to regulate our nervous system create hormonal balance but just in a really manageable way that kind of like makes sense um so i have uh, a few ways to kind of continue the conversation um, if anyone is interested I have a beautiful yoga membership which is uh, it's a cyclical but it's a virtual cyclical yoga studio <laughs> so it's all designed to work in tangent with your menstrual cycle so that you have a movement practice for how you feel um, but I also run group programs and I think by the time that this goes out um, I have a cyclical success launching which is a um, specifically for entrepreneurs and business owners um, that want to learn how to use their menstrual cycle to optimize their business to kind of up level where they're at to put into practice everything that I've spoken about but then apply it to business strategies and kind of um, defining success on our own terms in a way where we're not rejecting the the standard systems but finding our own path like not being a round peg in a square hole anymore but excelling to our full capacity on our own terms and working out what business looks like from that perspective. Samantha this has been a real treat for me I've literally just been soaking up all of this information I'm so grateful for your time today. I've just loved being here because I really love talking about this and I just am thrilled every time someone hears this information for me as a menstrual coach I mean my personal sort of mission is really about changing the conversation and fighting you know <laughs> To, for us to be seen and heard on our own terms, to kind of like continue to release the sort of shame and to be we feel, you know, just because we have a different system to the one the world has been based on. So 
any time that anyone listens to this and takes something from it and learns to be in a in any amount of acceptance more than they were of their menstrual cycle just pleases me no end and for those of you who've been watching this wonderful knowledge drop then give us a thumbs up if you feel that something in this conversation has really opened your eyes or even better let us know in the comments what has been your main insight what has been a beautiful takeaway from all of the wisdom that samantha has shared today